scan hallway to the scan. Right. I am Matthew Whitaker and I am a musician. Uh, I am 17 years old and I am also uh, visually impaired. So today we want to see what's happening in Matthew's brain while he's doing a variety of things. One was playing a blues, and one was playing a song that he'll play for the Kennedy Center tonight, and another was listening to music that he liked and maybe listening to something that wasn't as interesting. And lastly, it's having a musical conversation with another musician to see what's happening when two players have a dialogue together, sort of a wordless conversation that's uh, just based on music. The entire time, you're going to be in the scanner room, we're going to be in the control room about maybe 10 feet away from you, but separated by a glass window and a door. Okay. Is it like a recording studio, like control room? It's sort of like a recording studio. So the goal is to understand the neural underpinnings for something as complex, wonderful, and mysterious as music. I mean, we have a lot of scientific knowledge about how the world works, but relatively little knowledge about how the brain enables the arts. Art has been around throughout eternity. As long as there's been humans, there have been art. Every culture, every historical epoch, there's always been art. And so what I'm trying to understand is how can we use the arts to sort of unravel this complex neural circuitry that gives rise to new ideas. Technology, you know, has come really far, you know. I like how it's just kind of analyzed, right, musically, what, what I was, you know, thinking of. And um, I wonder, you know, what the results will be. In the end, it seems that humans are hardwired to create, and that may be linked to how humans actually survive.